when you pick every brand. If you pick every drug, you see that there is a, a what do you call it, um, caution. And then they give you the temperature under which that particular drug must be stored. And so when it comes to drugs, if you don't handle them well, that is why even the, uh, is it a pharmaceutical council, uh, uh, pharmaceutical council, they don't even allow drugs. You can't sell drugs in container. Why that? Because of the excessive heat. Because the containers produce, uh, they produce heat. And so if you should um, store drugs in the container, uh, it means that the temperature under which the drug must be stored, uh, you might not get the uh, correct one. There are some drugs that might be stored uh, in, uh, what do you call it? In a, in in, in a, what do you call it um a cold in a cold room like when you talk of insulin if you talk about some vaccines it must be stored in the refrigerator some drugs must be stored in the re uh, refrigerator and so all these things you need to know you need to know the drug the condition under which each drug must be stored that is why we are learning all these things so the first topic that uh, we will be treated will be the introduction to supply chain management. If you are doing supply chain, then we should know what supply chain is all about. Why should you do supply chain as a clinician? Is it, is it necessary for you to do it? And then we are also going to look at logistics management information systems. Think in your various facilities, some facilities are already using these applications, especially those of you in areas, in facilities where you have access to um, uh, what IT infrastructure. If you have access to internet, if you have access to uh, computer, then you may be using this. But where you don't have it, sometimes in a, is in a form of a ledger. Mm -hmm. You have a book that you record all those things in. Then I'm told where you don't even have um, electricity or access to computer, you. You bring it to the nearest uh, center, maybe the district office to do your entries. Okay, so the logistics management information system is a very important tool. It's um, a system of reporting and records. It's a system of records and reports uh, for the uh, various hospitals. And we're going to look at it, how it works. You're going to look at importance and how it functions. Then we're also going to look at assessing stock status. How do we, um, that's why some of these things will come under probably other topics. Okay, at any point in time, as a, as a nurse, you should know the stocks you have. Okay, the stocks, um, we have what you call the National uh, Essential Medicine List, okay? We have the essential uh, medicine list. And so you know the drugs that you can order and those that you cannot. There are some drugs when you come to our hospitals, you won't get them. You only get them at, uh, what do you call it, in, in, in other pharmacy shops because they are not, they are not part of the uh, national drug list or the essential medicine list. And so we should know, we should know uh, your stock, uh, what do you call it? the level, the stocks that you can order, those that you can order, those that you cannot. At any point in time, you should know the shelf life of um, stock you have because every stock has a shelf life and then you should know. So that is how I'll be treating the um, stock status. Then we'll be also looking at them maximum and then minimum inventory control systems. That is why I have called the inventory management. It should be treated under inventory uh, management. And that will let us know our maximum stock level, our minimum stock level by using what we call the economic um, order quantity model. It is a model that is used uh, to manage or to control inventory. 
it helps you to know at any point in time, you can't keep on ordering. At what point do we stop ordering? At what point do we stop buying or purchasing grants for our facility? So there should be a maximum stock level, depending on the facility, depending on the footfalls. And when I say footfalls, it depends on the number of people. In your case, you're looking at the world, the cases that you treat. The cases you treat will determine uh, uh, the, 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 what do you call it, the prevalence, it will determine the quantity that you are supposed to store. So we are going to look at the maximum and then the minimum stock level. We're going to look at the inventory control systems. How do we manage our inventory? The stock that we have, how do we um, manage it in such a way that we will avoid uh, stealing? That is what in supply chain we use Pilfering. Instead of stealing, we, we use pilfering. So whenever, whenever you see pilfering, it means stealing. Okay. How do we manage our stock in such a way that we avoid um, some things, some on what you call it, on ethical uh, practices at the stores? For instance, stealing, um, um, we, we talk of what? Aspiring drugs. If you don't manage them well, for instance, if you don't know the quantity you are supposed to order for your facility based on the footfalls or based on the number of people who come, the number of patients who come there, then you order them just like that, then definitely those items may become obsolete or they will expire. Okay, so we, we are looking at, we need to uh, know them. Then we're looking at the product selection. So the product selection comes under the uh, national, what do you call it, um, essential medicine list, or we call we talk we talk of the essential medicine list or the uh, national drug list because it's not every drug that you can order. It's not every drug that, or it's not every uh, item or health com. Uh, commodity that you can order. Look, it, you have to look at your facility. Maybe your facility uh, might not have center uh, to treat, let's say, um, cancer and some diseases. So definitely, if you place for order for certain drugs, they will not give you. So you have the list. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at the product selection. How do we select products that um, supposed to be used in our facilities. We are also going to look at the health commodity procurement. How do we buy? So it will come under procurement, okay? Uh, so when we are going to buy, if you want to buy, which is often not done by you, the purchasing is often done by the purchasing department, but in situations where you're supposed to do, or sometimes you learn some of these things to understand the processes that you go through to make purchases, okay? If you understand the processes, then when you are making orders, you know when to place your order and then other things. So if you request for something, if you need something, if you know the processes, then uh, you will follow it. You wouldn't wait till you run out of stock before, or you are going to look at your minimum stock level we're going to look at your reorder point and before you, you go. To, so we are looking at what? Uh, health commodity procurement. How do we procure? Meaning how do we buy uh, health commodities? Then we'll be treating storage and distribution. Storage is very, very important when it comes to um, dealing with, uh, when it comes to health supply chain. As I indicated earlier, once you order, you need, you, you should have, constantly you should have enough inventory or enough stock to be able to treat your patient, to be able to offer quality service. You need to have um, uh, storage facilities. And so how do we store them? How do we distribute these items? You know that the way we distribute uh, what they call uh, normal product or other product 
it's not the same way we distribute uh, health commodities. These are delicate um, items that must be handled with care. So even the mode of transportation, uh, the time, the movement, when when should a particular item be moved? What kind of transport system is um, not necessarily convenient, but which one is appropriate? We are looking at what the appropriateness of 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 the transport that you are using. Uh, it may be convenient, but not appropriate. So we need to look at all these things. Then we're going to look at monitoring and evaluation of supply chain. How do we monitor? How do we evaluate um, supply chain? Then we'll be looking at the logistics system. Logistics system. Uh, logistics. What is logistics? Uh, let, let, let me also get your understanding. People have funny, funny ideas about logistics. What is your what is logistics? If you You've heard the word logistics before. When you hear the word logistics, what comes to your mind? Hello, who can be of help? When you hear the word logistics, what comes to your mind? Who can help? Hello. Hi. Okay, listen. Oh, listen, I thought you were going to. You were answering me. So I don't have the idea in a... <laughs> but you've heard the word logistics before. Yes, please. So what, the word logistics, what comes to mind? The moment you hear the word, you see, the moment you hear certain thing. Even if you haven't seen it before, something comes to mind. So what comes to mind when you hear the word logistics? Equipment. You said? Equipment. Okay. Who else? Uh, Madam Lisbeth. Yeah. Can you can you raise your voice, Sally? Please, can you hear Sally? Yes, sir. Sir, please, I'm speaking. You are. I'm speaking, sir. Yeah. So I can't hear you. That's why I'm asking whether they can hear you. They are. Okay, then it's okay. Uh, it's a way so of listen. transport commodity, commodity to the cost of the way. Hello, sir. Yes, please. Oh, Lizzie. Okay, Noah. Noah, I've seen your hand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. The, 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 uh, logistics normally refer to the items or the things that we need to do our work at the workplace. Because if we don't get them, our work cannot okay. go on. So... Yeah, yes. well, sir, you know, uh, because that is what we all think normally. And uh, another, yes, is it, uh, is it by a bar? What, how do you pronounce it? I'm sorry, please, logistics, um, they are the, um, how should I use it? They are the acquire, how we acquire and store goods and services we use and um, how we make sure that they are being effectively um, distributed. Okay, very good, very good. Because the, 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 the logistics um, deals with the distribution or the transport. That is why we often use logistics and transport, okay? Because how these items are distributed. So we're looking at what? 
So under, like when you are separating supply chain from logistics, then warehousing, warehousing, transport, distribution, storage, they all come under logistics, like shipping and all those things, they come under logistics. So we are going to look at how uh, we design logistics system, uh, how do we design our um, logistics system in such a way that health commodities will be available um, at the right time and at the right place. You see, having a product. So we're talking about having the right product in the right quantity in the, at the right time and then at the right place. So these are the topics. And as I said, some of the as time, uh, we're going to look at uh, some of the things that you need to know, uh, basic things that you need to know. I was looking at, I have not seen uh, sourcing in your this thing, but then I'll make mention of it as we go through so that you come to know some of these things. So today we are going to look at what supply chain is all about because um, we are doing supply chain, uh, health supply chain. So we should know what supply chain is about before we move to the other uh, ones. So when you talk of supply chain management, um, it encompasses the planning and management of all activities involved in sourcing and procurement. So when we talk of sourcing, what is sourcing? Yes, have you heard about the word sourcing? What is sourcing? He's talking about sourcing and procurement. What is sourcing? It is about getting place. Yeah, uh, Jesse. Um, so I think um, these are the various places where we actually get the um, our items from, please. The various places. Yeah. Yes, so, we get we get the items from. Yeah. So when we talk about sourcing, we source what we cannot best um, produce in house. So as a facility, as a as a, as a, a hospital or a clinic. At what point do you source? So there are so many reasons why organizations um, outsource. Mm -hmm. So you look at first, you look at your capabilities, what you look at your strength, um, what I can do. So the things you cannot do yourself, you um, let others give it to you. So in most cases, we outsource things, things that we buy from outside that we cannot do them in-house. We, 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 we look at them as what well, outsourcing. And normally in supply chain, uh, sourcing comes under procurement. Because when you're going to procure, when you're going to buy something, you ask yourself, is this something that I can do it in-house? Or I'm supposed to acquire it from what an external agency. So things that you cannot do in-house, you give it to an outside uh, agency or organization to to do it for you. Then when you talk of the procurement, we all know what procurement is all about. It's the act of what buying, going to buy what essential things that we need. And then we also have the procurement processes in a facility like ours as a institution, maybe the hospitals as institution, you cannot just get up on like individual things that you get up and say that I need laptop, then you go out there to buy. I want um, this particular drug, and then you move to the nearest uh, chemical shop or pharmacy to buy. When it comes to institutional buying, that's what we often refer to as procurement, because it goes through a lot of uh, processes. You can't just get up and then buy. The procurement act will, 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 will get hold of you. You see, so when it comes to buying, if it's a private institution, private hospital, you can. But even the, uh, what do you call it? The mission hospitals, well-established ones, you can't just get up and then go and buy. It has to go through 
that tendering process or something before buying. So the difference between procurement and outsourcing, and outsourcing you are also buying. So sourcing means that you looking for things that you cannot what, um, produce yourself, things you cannot provide yourself, then you fall on external agencies to buy. And, so, and then, and all logistics management activities. So that's where logistics also um, comes in here. Here, when you talk of the logistics management activities, we are looking at how um, the items are, are acquired and then distributed. So once you are acquiring, you are looking at our transportation. How do we transport the items? How do we store them? So you need a warehousing, you need a proper storage um, facilities to be able to um, to be able to have effective logistics uh, system in place. So when you talk about the logistics management activities, we are going to look at the transportation, we're going to look at distribution, we're going to look at uh, storage, we're going to look at warehousing, and sometimes, if possible, even how um, the, the packaging of these items. And it also includes what coordination and collaboration with channel partners. That's what we call it a chain. You see, when you say something is a chain, it means that there are a lot of people, the, 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 it has some sort of what, um, interconnected, uh, uh, there are a lot of activities in there that are interconnected. So we talk of it as a chain because there are a lot of people involved. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are linked, they, they are connected. So we can talk about the supplier, mm -hmm. supplier who is the first point of call, like the primary, uh, they supply the primary raw material. When we talk of the drugs that we use, we're saying in that we talk about supply chain <clears throat> in the sense that a lot of people are involved before a drug is manufactured. So from the, um, what do you call it? The supplier. Suppliers often supply raw materials. Okay, they are dealing with the raw material. Then from there, it goes to the manufacturer, from the manufacturers and you have intermediaries. And then when you talk of intermediaries, there could be so many of them within the chain because how we get the drugs, how we get the items we, we are in possessing, it, 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 those items go through a lot of hands, a lot of intermediaries before they get to the our end, before the consumer who is the final uh, user of the item. So that's why we talk about what coordination and collaboration with channel partners. Because you need to coordinate. How do we get drugs? As we sit, if you want to buy any health commodity, since we are not producing them in-house, we buy them from someone else. And to even get to the manufacturer, sometimes it goes through a lot of hands before it gets to the manufacturer. So most of us, the items we consume. Majority of the item, most of the items we consume, we don't know the manufacturer. Yes, on paper, we know that this item uh, was manufactured by a social and so company. But we don't know any of the members, especially if it is foreign. And then it takes these intermediaries, it takes these uh, suppliers to get us these, it takes third party and then service providers, other service providers for us to get. So when we talk of supply chain management, we're talking about a lot of activities, a lot of events happening within, within, within the chain. Let us look at some definitions, okay, from uh, some expert. And normally, uh, definition that we pick, we pick for normally, this definition is from the uh, American, uh, normally, American, they have a lot of associations. And most of the definitions you get, you get them because an individual cannot define. Normally, we want the association to come together to define, uh, give meaning to a particular thing. And so this one is coming from the American Association of um, Supply Chain Managers. And then the definition of supply chain management is the management of the flow of goods and services, which includes all processes 
that transform raw materials into final products. So we are looking at what the flow. When you say those, when you talk of flow, okay, it means that a lot of things happening within a lot of roles, people, a lot of people are involved with activities. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're talking about the flow of goods and services, which includes all the processes that transform the raw materials into final products. So what processes? Okay, in transforming raw material into final product. We have the mechanical reaction and then chemical transformation. So when we talk of mechanical transformation or chemical transformation, all these uh, supply chain is involved because you need to get a product from the supplier. And then in supply, uh, in supply chain, we talk about the suppliers, supplier to mother edge. Why do we say mother edge? Mother Earth, because most of the things we get, we get them from Mother Earth, whether from the sea, whether from the land or whatever. So in most cases, any serious procurement officer or supply chain officer, when dealing with an organization, will then trace, want to know the source of your supply. You want to be a distributor. You want to supply us with health commodities. You don't just buy from the place. You need to know the source of the supply. Where are they getting the, uh, uh, what they call it from, the product? What is the source? Can they pro provide us? Can they supply us constantly? For how long can they do it? That is why when it comes to oil and gold, you ask yourself, Ghana, we have gold all over. Why is it the companies are not prospecting for these gold? But then individuals, those, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, low, uh, is it um, small scale miners, and then Galamse people are destroying the land because they look at the world, the quantum, the quantum, the deposit. So if they come to this place, if a gold, um, if a mining company comes here, at least the mine, the lifespan hmm, of the mine should be around 20 years. Please, can you mute yourselves? Please kindly mute yourselves. Okay. So when when we realize that they look at what the source, and then sometimes they feel that if we invest so much into this uh, project, uh, the source is limited, we wouldn't get much. And so they wouldn't. So it is very, very important when it comes to um, supply chain, we're always interested in the source of the supply. And it also involves active streamline of business supply side activities to maximize customer value and gain competitive advantage in the marketplace. So we are looking at what, how um, we are able to streamline, how we are able to what, um, we are looking at what synergy. When we talk of synergies, like everybody within the chain bringing. But when you talk of the supply chain, all that we are trying to do is that we're looking at what, um, activities involving uh, different uh, partners or different people to ensure uh, the supply, the smooth supply or a smooth delivery of goods and services. So supply chain, we are not only dealing with, um, we, not, we are not only dealing with fiscal product, but we deal with um, services as well. We procure services as well. So let us look at the stages, mm, supply chain stages. One is information flow. The first stage in supply chain is information flow. Why information flow? It involves transmitting orders and updating the status of delivery. If you don't give information, for instance, you need, you want um, items mm, from the stores, either central stores or the district uh, stores. If you don't give them information, mm, if you don't tell them the quantities, the dosage, 
that you need. They wouldn't be able to, no one will be able to serve you. And then those are the stores must also give information about the world, the commodities that are available. So that when you are making orders, we don't order items that are not in stock. So information flow within the supply chain is very, very important when it comes to supply chain. The first is what information flow. The second is the product flow. It involves the movement of goods from the supplier to a customer, as well as the customer return, as well as any customer returns or service need. The topics that I talk about, I did not add returns, but we need to do returns because when it comes to health commodities, how do we manage returns? How do we manage uh, obsolete uh, equipment or uh, items that are all deteriorated, expired goods, how do we handle them? We need to uh, look at how returns are managed. Then, then, then the last, not the least, the most important is financial flow. Because if you talk about information, if you talk about the product without finance, <laughs> the flow, there wouldn't be smooth flow within, within the chain. So financial flow is very, very important. Flow of funds or money consists of credit terms, payment um, schedules, and then consignment and title ownership arrangements. So when you talk of consists of credit terms, if you are buying, if you are making orders, what is the credit terms? Is it cash and carry? Is it, are you buying on credit? Then we're looking at the payment um, schedules. Probably do you pay quarterly or you pay on daily basis. And then we're looking at the consignment. Consignment, we are looking at all the items, the goods that um, are in transit or the goods that are coming to us. And then title ownership arrangement. If you have done business law before, then it will tell you when ownership passes. Okay, at what point? Who bears the uh, cost in case of anything? So the title ownership is very, very important. So in, in, in your case, I want to find out, since you are already practicing nurses, I want to find out that if you order for items, okay, at what point in time does ownership, does title ownership pass on to your facility or who, who, who is the owner of the goods coming? Who has title to the goods? When you say title, you're talking about the ownership. Like you order items from the warehouse and then the store delivers it, they give it to uh, a van to bring it to your end. At what point in time do we say that ownership has been or transferred? Or who bears the cost in case of anything? Hello. They're, they're, they're in charge. Those who are in charge of facilities. Yes, Noah. Yes, sir. Uh, I think uh, this normal happens at the point where you have received your items, do your cross invoice and receive them. So when these things are done, it means you yeah, have now taken total ownership of the items or, or the goods. Okay, okay. So when the items uh, you, are sir. in transit, when they are in transit, who be, so it still means that when they are in transit, ownership hasn't been what passed. It is still with the is it the central stores or the distributor bringing it? It is in law. It all depends on the contract in law. 
sometimes while the items are loaded into a cargo, okay, and then everything's signed and dispatched, ownership is transferred. Okay, so it depends. And in some cases, the contract will say that until the goods get to the final destination, ownership is not what passed. It's still the, uh, the distributor, is still the owner of the goods until you have received cross-checked and signed. When they are in transit, sometime when they are in transit, the distributor or the seller bears the consequences in case of anything. Or in some cases, once they are loaded into the truck, or uh, once they are loaded or dispatched, then ownership is what transferred to the buyer. So it depends on the contract. Jesse. Um, hello, sir. Um, please, I want to add this if it's co correct. Uh, what about when the um, consumer actually um, sends his or her own like cargo to go for the items. That one to um, is his ownership um, passed right away. Oh, oh, yeah. What would be in the contract? Why is the consumer or the buyer sending his own vehicle? If it is enshrined in the contract that for this contract, you are the one, well, I'm, mine is to what? Bring the goose. You have to bring your vehicle to come and then pick them. So it depends okay. on the on the contract that the agreement that you people have. Okay. Yeah. And that is why some when you when you are doing business, some of these things uh it must be uh, stated that in terms of responsibilities, uh everybody's uh responsibilities in the world. Um supply chain, in terms of supply chain, like what is the uh, supplier's liability, the manufacturer's liability, the distributor, and then the consumer. You know that in some of the, in, in, in the advanced countries, it is only in our part of the world that when you buy the, the rights on the invoice goods so they are not returnable. And I think people are stopping it, okay? This is when you buy from provided You've not uh, what do you call it? Um, damage the item. If the item is in the right state, if we're able to prove that the item has is a problem, they, they normally collect it. Uh, these days, people are. But in most cases, uh, in most cases, uh, a boom stores behind the uh, beneath the invoice, they they write the goods sold the American. Yeah, right. so it depends. It depends on the contract. But you know, our part of the world, all these things, uh, we don't enjoy a lot of, um, what do you call, call it, um, warranties because of our behavior. Um, excuse me to use it this way. The average African is not sincere. The average African is not sincere. Let me give you an example. I was with Vodafone. When Vodafone came first, I was with them, and we had these phones. In those days, um, they had phones, T-shirts. If you purchase a phone, you were given, um, uh, what do you call it, a T-shirt and other cap, other cap or something. And then the phones had warranty. And I think a six months warranty. Sometimes you'll be there, and somebody will come. You ask, oh, what happened to the phone? Said, oh no, nothing happened to it. I was charging. When I picked it, uh, the phone, I realized that the phone was off. But those who are into phones, okay, there is a way to check whether a phone has fallen into a liquid or the phone has fallen down. There is a code. I've forgotten those, those codes. But there was one that I always remember, the Litmus paper. You know that phones have a little more paper on the battery. So currently, because most of the phones, the batteries are embedded, you can see the, what do you call it, little more paper, that white paper there. 
the moment liquid touches, it turns to red. So the moment you open the phone, you see that it is red. And then there was so many, there was a nice way I used to ask them. So normally when I realize that it had fallen into water, I don't ask you whether it has fallen into water or not. I ask you, oh, so what happened? Did it fall into water or soup? And the person will say, oh, it fell into water. It's my small girl who put it in the water. Meanwhile, when you ask her, they will tell you. So normally I don't ask them whether it fell into water or not. I'll just enter the code and get a response from the phone. If it, 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 it fell into water, then I ask you, oh, did it fall into water or soup? Then the person will say, oh, it fell into water. The person has answered you. Then that case, warranty doesn't cover. So the warranty is for the, what do you call it, uh, operating system. If the phone is not working, the operating system, but if it falls down, it recently that Samsung, they've, uh, when you buy Samsung phone, they ensure the screen, you ensure the screen, so that when the screen breaks within certain period, they replace it for you. Other than that, uh, it doesn't apply. But in our part of the world, we are not enjoying a lot of warranty because we are not ready to speak the truth. When we go, we want, always want to lie so that we get it. And so companies are not ready to entertain that. So let us look at a um, component of supply chain. When you talk of components, we are looking at elements. Okay, When you talk of supply chain, the composition of supply chain or the things that come together to make supply chain, the parts. Okay, so we're talking about components, the parts, the various parts of supply chain, or we can also say the elements. One is the patient. So I've put the customer into bracket patient because in our case, we deal with patient, we don't deal with customers. True or false, do you deal with customers? You don't deal with customers, you deal with all patients. Patients or clients. Yes, but yes, in that, uh, because you see, these words are used, you, you know, when because lawyers deal with clients, okay? You know that um, clinicians deal with patients, and then when it comes to uh, the businesses, they deal with uh, customers. So when you, can, when, when you say that the customer mm, is the most important component of the supply chain, because all the activities, all the activities that occur within the chain are done because of the customer. And the customer is the one who bears the cost, the total cost, the supply chain, the, the supplier's cost, the distributor's cost, uh, the manufacturer's cost are all paid out by the patient. So when the patient comes to the hospital and then you you treat the person. How do you price the service that you offer? You look at the word, the items you use. Is that noted? You are going to look at the uh, commodity or the item that you have used to treat the patient. The cost of all the items. In addition to probably uh, a chapel, that is where the government is taking maybe your services as a nurse is not added to the, or do you add it? Hello? Are your services added to the cost? No, no, no sir. No, yeah, sir. Is it, is it? Is it? No, sir. How about the doctor's uh, consulting? Consultation fee? Thanks. So the services are added, is that not it? Oh, it's added, yes, sir. It's added, consultation fee. So you look at the consultation fee, in addition to the patients, uh, okay, if the person, if it is an inpatient, then uh, the cost of um, the bed, everything maybe on daily basis, if you sleep there, you charge maybe every day, you pay maybe, uh, 50 cities, and at the end of the day, it is added to your bill. And this, and we're saying that all these activities that occur within the supply chain, the patient who happens to be the client is the is the bearer. He, he or she bears the costs. 
everything that happened, the cost of transport, everything, is the customer or the client who pays for it. The next component of supply chain or the next element is distributors. It refers to intermediaries within the supply chain and these include wholesalers, retailers and agents of all kinds. These intermediaries serve as links between the manufacturers of products and the consumers of the product. They ensure that information funds and the product flow within the supply chain. So distributors, they are the link between the consumer and the manufacturer. So most of the items we consume, yes, on paper we know the company that produced those items, the companies that produce those items, but we don't know them. We don't know where the factories are. So it is the distributor who is a link, it says as a link between the manufacturer and consumers. So at the end of the day, if you want a commodity, you don't go to the manufacturer because the manufacturer will not deal with you. You'd have to fall on a distributor. He's saying that they ensure that information funds and product flow within the supply chain. Because they give, the, they give information to the manufacturer. They also pay the manufacturer. They collect money from the patient or the buyer, and then they fund the manufacturer's activity. And so the, the are task is so called funding. They provide the funds, they provide information within the chain. And the next component or the next element is the manufacturer. So the manufacturer's job is to transform raw materials into useful finished products for the ultimate consumption of the customer. And so they, they do, and we're saying that within the chain, okay, the, 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 the majority of the cost in care, greater part of the cost in care within supply chain it manages from the manufacturers in a form of production cost, storage cost, and transportation cost. So the bulk of the costs, greater part of the cost in care within the chain, uh, it manages from the manufacturer because the cost of production, they are buying raw material, they buy the raw material, they need to pay uh, wages and salaries, they need to buy equipment, everything. And then storage, after manufacturing, they need to provide proper storage before the goods are um, sent to the distributor. And sometimes they pay transportation costs. Sometimes they pay <laughs> <laughs> Please be conscious of your environment. Okay, you always must be alert because when you are on such platform, whatever you do, everybody, uh, all your colleagues see whatever you are doing. So please just be conscious of your environment. Know that you are the virtual classroom. Please. Okay. So the next component, uh, which is the last, but not the least, is the supplier. Suppliers provide component parts and other inputs and raw materials to the manufacturers. They play a very important role in supply chain because the reliability and efficiency of the supply chain depends to a large extent on the reliability and efficiency of these suppliers. So suppliers are very, very important. I think from here we are now able to distinguish between a distributor 
and a supplier. Okay, so the distributors, the distributor deals with the finished product, while the supplier deals with raw material. And when we talk of component part, component parts are semi-finished, uh, what do you call it, um, raw material, because it is not, it's, a, it's an end product, it's a finished product, it could be a finished product of a manufacturer, but it is used in the production of other products. So in the hospital where you prepare, where you have um, local preparations that you do, like Miss Esper said, did you still prepare that one? Esper said. Is it still there? You know that Esper said, and then I know trisilicate and some of the drugs were able to prepare them in-house, especially uh, the, you said at the pharmacy. And the, the materials used, we call them component parts because they are semi-finished products, but they are not uh, an end in it, so they are not finished products. So you they go into uh, what they call production, uh, to be to become finished products. And so when you talk of supply deal with component part and raw materials, whereas distributors deal with finished products or intermediaries, they deal with what finished products. Okay, so from what we've done, any question contribution from your end? You have con any 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 um, contribution? You have any question from your end? Hello. Hello, sir. Please, uh, do, 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 uh, are, are you clear? Yes, sir. Do, do, do you understand? Are you clear with the delivery? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so if we are clear, then you ask questions. Okay. Uh, let me see. Those who have raised their hands. It Odum. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, please, I have a question. I want to make a, get some clarification. Sir, okay. please. Uh, we said that the patient or the consumer are the important part of the components. Mm -hmm. However, uh, the distributors, we've got to know that uh, they are also those that are very vital in terms of the in terms of the information flow, product flow, and financial flow. So I want to know that can we conclude that uh, the the distributors mm. are the determinants of the supply chain stages? No, it's not the consumer. If if no one has headache, will you need paracetamol? No, sir. If no patient comes with sore. Would you need those, uh, well, let's say, gauze bandage and all the things you use to treat sore? No, sir, sir. Mm. Will you need them? No, please. Mm -hmm. So the information flow that we're talking about, the information is coming from the patient or the handlers of the patient. The cash flow is coming from the patient because at the end of the day, if the distributor brings the goods and he or she does not get the money, next time they won't bring it. If the patient does not consume, they don't get money, do they? If patient don't, if people don't fall sick, uh, like the, the very day people cease for, uh, falling sick, your job as a nurse is over. True or false? That is true. Yes, that's why we say that the patient or the client is the most important 
uh, component within the chain because the supplier, the manufacturer, the distributor, they will all work towards satisfying the client or the customer. Is that about it? True or false? That's it. I'm, I'm getting it. I want my clarification from the distributor, the last sentence. So in other words, does it mean that the distributors are the speaking piece for the uh, consumers or the patients? No, they are, they are intermediary. Yeah, they are intermediaries. I guess you know what I'm saying. Because the patient, individual patient cannot go to the manufacturer. Imagine if all the patient individually you have to go to the manufacturer to go and buy your own drug. Will it be possible? That is why yes, the you've got in it. Yes, please. Uh-huh. So the funds, the information, everything that the distributor is taking to the manufacturer. They are all coming from the client. It is at the instance of the client that the manu uh, the the, uh, the intermediary the intermediaries uh what or they 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 send those information. Okay, okay. So thank you. I'm clarifying. Okay, there was another hand. There were two hands. Oh, you are okay now. Okay, okay, convert, convert as if Convert. Convert, I've seen your hand up. Okay, Elizabeth. Hello, sir. Yeah, Elizabeth. Hello, sir. Yes, please. Hello. I'm listening, Elizabeth. Uh, I was only confused with the the word um, supplier and the distributor because I used to hear people use them interchangeably, but I think now I'm clear with it. Yeah, now I so know those that supply the raw material and the distributors that... they use the finished product. Yes. Supply it. You see, normally, you see, after all, when it comes to some of these words, we use them uh, anyhow. <laughs> Excuse me to say. Yes, sir. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, please. But on paper, when it comes to academics, we try to separate them. You okay. do the right thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. like, like in the hospital, yeah. patients come and they, they, they say things that you think that, no, this thing, that's not how it is done. So okay, you do sir. you being professional do the right thing? Is that not oh, all right? Sir. So I'm now clear with them. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh Docas. Um, sir. Yes, madam. Yeah, sir. My question is if um a consumer is not satisfied with the product, who mm -hmm. does she report to? Is it the distributor or the manufacturer? No, the manufacturer, the, you know that distributors, uh, patients don't do directly with manufacturers. So normally what happened that there was a, a channel of reporting. Okay? There's a channel of reporting. In some products, you realize that they will give you the hotline. You as a the whole the hotline and see if they will mind it. So you normally take it to the the retailer. Okay, you no know, one it co comes to the intermediate. You have the distributor, you may have the retailer before the final consumer. And sometimes you might not even know the distributor or the intermediary. So you use the one of the intermediaries is the retailer. For instance, a drug, you buy a drug from the drugstore and there was problem with it. You take it back to the retailer where you purchase the drug. It is up to the retailer to deal with the distributor. The retailer also knows the distributor. So once they take it, they send it to the distributor. And if you deal with Fanmark, okay, I used to be a distributor of Fanmark. And anytime you buy their product and it is uh, damaged, when they bring the product, 
and the damage it has expired, you take it back to them. And so consumers cannot take it to pharma. They bring it to the, the what they call it, the distributor, okay, or the agent. The agent will collect it and then will in turn send it to Farmer Limited. So the consumer doesn't do that really with the manufacturer. It is the distributor. Or you can deal okay, with the retailer. You go to the retailer, from the retailer to the distributor before it gets to the manufacturer. Oh, okay, thank you. Welcome. And then I've seen another hand up. Is it... Um, There's another. Ah, uh, what is what is? There was a hand up. Is it Dora or what? Are you all okay? There are two hands up. Yes, sir. Yes, please. Can the manufacturer also play the role of a distributor? It depends. Okay, if the company is small company, okay. Normally, smaller companies do that really with the uh, even even they don't do with the pay, uh, they don't deal with the final consumer. Uh, most often, like even let's use the such uh, water producers. Okay, even though the manufacturer do the distribution, they sell to the retailer. So you you don't go to the company to get and buy one. Uh, what do you call it? Such a, I get in it. You yes. want one bottle of water to drink, then you move all the way to Twelum Limited. Mm -hmm. The company producing uh, what they call it, Vena. Then you say, "Oh, I'm buying water. I want one bottle." They will slap you. The security will not even allow you to enter. Even if you are going to buy ten thousand, they won't sell it to you because they would refer you to their distributor. So it depends on organization, how big the organization is. Smaller ones normally deal with, even deal with retailers, but not the final consumer. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, Douglas, your hand is still up. Hello, Douglas. Okay, let's continue. Please, any other question? So let us look at objective of supply chain. Okay, I think this is where messages that I did not read. Okay, so let us look at the objectives of supply chain. Supply chain has two major objectives. And these objectives are one is to create the most value for the customer. Okay. One objective is to create the most value for the customer. When we say that to create the most value for the customer, what is what is what is the meaning? Who can assist me here? You saying the one objective of supply chain is to create the most value for the customer. And the second is to provide the customer the most convenient at the most convenience at the least cost. These are the main objectives of supply chain. Who can who can who can explain this? Who, who, who do you understand it? Hello. Hi. Yeah. So one uh, no is in Nuridino. Yes, sir. Uh, please, I don't have the idea for now. When you say to create the most value for the customer. So what this means is that when you talk of creating the most value for the customer, you know that goods like raw materials in its states is valueless. For instance, if somebody gives you a bag of cocoa, okay? one bag of cocoa beans. Apart from you selling, it is valueless, is that not it, to you? Or those of you around Takwa area, 
Okay, I have also been manganese. If you were if you are working at Ghana manganese, for instance, if you pick uh some of the manganese and you put it in a polythene bag, no, they will ask you where are you taking it to? Because it's of no use. You can't use it. But if it were gold, then they will chase you because it has value. Okay. So what the supply chain does is that through the raw material, so from the raw, uh, from the suppliers and to the manufacturer and the intermediary to the consumer, within the chain, a lot of transformation um, take place, a lot of things, a lot of activities take place. And then uh, what it does is that it create value for the customer because the product in its raw state is, is valueless unless there was some uh, uh, additional, what do you call it, um, you add some value to it by transforming it into a valuable product. And that is what supply chain does. So from the suppliers and from the farm, the supplier to the manufacturer, intermediary, retailers, then to the final consumer. And these, the product, uh, the product goes through a lot of what changes either chemical or mechanical, uh, what they call transformation. Uh, so it creates value. Then the next point is it provides the customer the most convenient at the least cost. Imagine, as we said, as I said earlier, imagine each patient is supposed to go to the manufacturer to buy. Then a lot of people will even die before they go to the manufacturer's end. And so what supply chain does is that these goods are brought to the doorstep of the consumer at the least cost. <clears throat> because if the consumer was to produce this item themselves or to even go to a manufacturer or a distributor to buy, you can look at the costs. Mm -hmm. But if through the chain, it gets to the consumers and uh, the person gets it at ease and then at the world at the least um, costs. So let us look at the functions of supply chain. Idris. Uh, uh, with the place the most value for the customer. Can you also put it that way? It's like creating or changing raw materials or items to valuable uh, commodities to the client, like to to, yeah. to a state to which can benefit or use it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it, so let us look at the functions of supply chain. Functions of supply chain, what supply chain does. Okay. So within within the health system, when you talk of supply chain, what role do they play? What is the what is the function of supply chain within the health, uh, what do you call it, sector? First function is purchasing. So purchasing is the first function of supply chain management. And it pertains to procuring raw materials and other resources that are essential for the delivery of quality health care. It requires coordination with supplies in order for. So the first function of supply chain is purchasing that is buying. Mm -hmm. that, that is the first rule. The first function yeah. is what? Buying. So the other aspect of it is the probably the processes that you go through. But the main function of supply chain is procuring goods and services for an organization. So if you pick if you pick Ghana Health Service for instance, you realize that Ghana Health Service have a strong uh, supply chain system. Okay, from the central stores 
the, 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 the procurement team is there, they purchase and then it goes to central stores, then the distributor. Because almost everything you do, I always tell people that in, in supply chain, we say that every army, mm, every army uh, march on a toward stomach. When you say that if the stomach is, 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 is full, when the army, when the personnel, when they are, when they are full, so when you say that they are full, it's not just their belly, the full that they take in terms of equipment, in terms of facilities. I mean, America is strong not because of the human beings, but because of the equipment they possess. Okay, because of the equipment they possess. And so um, the first function is they making sure that they've procured the raw material, the resources that they require to be able to function. The same thing applies to the healthcare system. The first thing is you procuring the raw materials and the other resources that are essential for delivery of healthcare. Without them, you cannot do anything. And that is why sometimes people will blame uh, clinicians for nothing. Because if you bring a patient, sometimes it's painful. And I know a lot of you have witnessed that before. Where you sit, <laughs> watching a patient die because there are no equipment or there are no drugs. There are no, the, the, the things you need to be able to save the life of the person, you don't have it. And I think about two, three years ago, an incident happened in the North, I forgot the exact town, where they said that there was a snake bite. They went to the hospital and the nurse was, uh, the nurse did not help. She just looked at the child and then she, she couldn't do anything at the time because for at that time, I was telling people that look, probably uh, the attitude, if, if she had shown concern, oh, though the person would die because she didn't have the antivenom, anti snake venom to, uh, inject the patient or to inject the boy. And there was nothing the nurse could do at the time, but probably showing empathy would have in her something because there was nothing she could do at the time. With snake bites, she couldn't do anything. And it was because there was no anti-snake venom. That's why she couldn't save it. So I realized that the work you do as a nurse if people will praise you, sometimes it will depend on the facilities available. When people travel outside, when people travel to abroad, US, Canada, and all those pla places, and they praise their healthcare system, it is because they have the equipment, they have the facilities. And you know that if you are working at the place where all the facilities are avail available, you feel so happy, you feel comfortable working. Is that not it? No, you, there was joy, there was smile on your face because the equipment that the everything is there. Imagine the lectures that I'm offering today. If the internet is breaking at my end, myself, I'll be frustrated. I wouldn't be able to flow like I'm doing because of what hitches here and there. But if the system, if everything is working and you are delivering a service, you deliver from the bottom of your heart. And so equipment are very, 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 important. Then let's look at operations. What is operations aspect of supply chain? The next function of supply chain is operations. And within supply chain, the operation team engages in demand planning and forecasting in order for them to be all. So what the operations aspect is that, you see, somebody does, somebody's work is to forecast the quantity of items that you require to be able to work function as a clinician in your various facilities. So what the operations aspect of supply chain does is that they plan, mm, constantly they plan the kind of raw material they require, the quantities they will need, then they make projections as to the quantity of materials that they need, the quantity of uh, 
health commodity or stock they will need for the foreseeable future by taking into consideration previous uh, years records and then their own projections. So they should be able to focus. That is why sometimes you don't run out of stock. Sometimes you run out of stock of certain commodities. And when you run out of stock, either the operations, they are not doing their work or they are doing their work, but it's beyond them. There is no money. Where there was no money, sometimes even when you are performing, even when uh, where there is no money mm, and the facility is doing its best, we don't have the equipment, everything that you need. You might think that somebody is not working, but the person is doing the best only that uh, you don't have what it takes to deliver. You don't have what it takes to uh, buy. So operations aspect of supply chain is what? Planning. Mm, they plan the goods and services that will be needed. They, they, they plan, they need to know the demand, the footfalls, the number of key patients that will be coming. You need to make projections. If we are unable to um, uh, estimate accurately or forecast accurately, that is where you run out of stock every now and then. Every now and then you run out of stock and then uh, people will say that, oh, this facility, I won't go there, you will die. Not that because they don't have what they, they need. And then the next function is logistics. And then the logistics, as we said, pertains to what? Uh, logistics pertains to requirement for coordination. This will call for making local warehouse arrangements. Logistics ensures that the product will reach the end point delivery without any hindrances. So logistics deals with what? Distribution how goods and how goods get to their uh, rightful destination. Okay, so sometimes we use this word, we don't have the logistics to work. So probably moving forward, you can always say that we don't have the tools to work, we don't have the needed equipment instead of saying logistics. Because if you talk about logistics, then the professional will say that, no, you are not using the right way. Because when you talk about the logistics, we are looking at um, warehousing arrangements, storage, transportation, system distribution, um, the system you put in place. <clears throat> then the next function is resource management. You know, when it comes to resource management, Production consumes raw material technology. So, like in the hospitals, you need you have what we call the consumables. Every now and then, you need um, uh, PPEs, the things that you need to be able to function. And how are these resources managed? If you don't manage the resources well, to be abused. Okay, so you need to, the resource management is another function of supply chain. So all the process needs to be efficient and effective. All the supply chain processes should be efficient and effective. When you talk of efficiency, you can be effective without being efficient. True or false? What is the difference between the two words? Being effective and being efficient. What is the difference? Hello. Who can help me with the difference between efficiency and effectiveness? Oh, you don't Sir, understand. Please, I'm trying. Okay. Sir, efficient. Effective means it's done properly. And then efficient okay. it means like it's enough or something. So one is doing the right thing and doing things right. What is the difference? 
which one is doing the right thing and which one is doing things right. Being effective is doing the right thing, okay? And being efficient is doing things right. You can be effective without being efficient. Do you know that? Yes, sir. For instance, a patient comes to the hospital. The person is in a severe, I mean, you, you try to save the person's life. You've been effective by saving the person's life, being on time. But you use more, uh, what do you call it, uh, materials than you shoot. Somebody, maybe you have an accident case and then you use a whole, like, uh, this we call it a gauze bandage, mm? a whole bundle for the wound. Probably you could have used half. You've been effective, but not efficient. So being efficient is you using raw material judiciously. And being effective is doing things, doing the right thing. You are always on time doing what is expected of you. But you can be there on time doing what is expected of you. But at the end of the day, you know there are some people who are very good, but some people say, hmm, God will do a good one now. So it means that the person is not being efficient somewhere. He's effective, but he's not being efficient somewhere. So we're saying that when it comes to resource allocation or resource management, you have to be both effective and then efficient. You do things right. And then you make sure that resources are used properly. Are you okay with the explanation or so it's not going well? We are okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Then we're looking at um, information workflow. We said that in the when we were talking about the component of supply chain, we talked about the intermediaries, okay, being the source of information and funding. So when you talk of information workflow, Within the chain, without information, supply chain cannot be effective. You cannot, you cannot manage, you cannot manage your supply chain effectively if you don't have information. So information sharing and distribution is what keep all of the other functions of supply chain management on track. So why do we say that information? Mm -hmm. information distribution or information sharing keeps all the other functions of supply chain on track. So let us pick purchasing. How does information sharing put purchasing on track? Is a question, who can assist me? We're saying that the information flow and distribution they help keep all the other functions of supply chain management on track. And the question is, how does information flow put purchasing function on track? Hello? Are you there? The, the, the platform is too quiet. So we are here. We are there, sir. So we are, we are listening well. No, no, we are not sir. We are listening. Yeah, but I ask question. So the question demands an answer. Okay, I've seen two hands. Um, who are they? Uh, Idrisu. And then after you it, then we have Esther. So with the information uh, flow, without mm -hmm. information, take uh, the suppliers or where you are buying or purchasing your goods who might not know what you need as at that time. So they need 
your input, which will be the information to yes. be able to supply. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Esther. Esther. Esther, I can't hear you. Sir, please. Um, I, I was also thinking that um, when there is a flow of accurate information, it will help us to know what needs to be achieved and then how to go about it. Okay, so thank you very much. Very okay, that that's good. And then and then um um Lisbeth, do you want to talk? Say yes, please. So please um when you want to purchase something, you would surely have to need information because yeah. you would want a type of um material or um product that you want. So yeah. you have to share information about the type of um, product you want, how you want it, and when you need it, okay. and how it should be transported or something. So all the information about the item you need has to be communicated well, so that at the end of it all, both of us will be satisfied. Thank you. Thank you very much. Then... um. Uh, Samuel Odum. Sir, please. Uh, and you have um, an oncology or a cancer unit. Okay. Of patients in the come for to have a, an apprehensive facility or clinic where yeah, there is a high quantum of people as well as mm -hmm. less a diabetic unit. And when mm -hmm. that happens, it tells that uh, on the point you know that the, uh, the hypertension and the, the diabetes, there are high quantum of patients. Therefore, when you are making a medication order for such two conditions, it, it, it gives a signal that it, uh, the medication needs to be very high in terms of the quantum. And the okay. oncology or the cancer medication needs to be low. So through this information flow, we get to know that we need to uh, order for a high amount of this particular group of medications as compared to the other. And also, in terms of its importation, how to get them on point at all times so that it can meet the patient satisfaction also needs to be communicated. Thank you very much. You know, you realize that without information, the procurement team. The procurement team on their own cannot buy. Procurement department on their own cannot buy anything if the, what do you call it, um, the medical unit or the, 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 they are not giving information. On their own, they can't just get up and say that we need this quantity of item. Okay, so always, always they need to, uh, what do you call it, uh, give information. Kevin. Kevin, I've seen that your hand is up. Yeah, it's about the information sharing. I think you closed the curtain on it already. Is that? It's about the information sharing. Like, I wanted to make a point, but you you move on already, so it's okay. Oh, okay. So you realize that as um, Sami said, you need information. And I indicated the procurement department, they don't have the right to buy unless they are authorized, unless there is a requisition. Okay. So when we start doing the procurement, we will get to procurement process. Then you know that uh, you only buy upon uh, instruction. So that is what they need. And then if the information is not communicated properly, then it will also lead to disaster. That is where problems uh, start coming if the information is not properly 
delivered. Then let us look at our last slide, which is the uh, JC. Yeah, yes, sir. So I want to add this. So meaning if there's no information flow, there is no product flow, right? Yes. Okay. You, 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 the supply chain officer, what are you going to buy? You need recommendation from the, uh, probably whoever is in charge, whether the medical director or the matron or whatever. It is based on their request that you go and buy. So when you go out to buy drugs, what drug are you going to buy? What are you going to buy? You can't buy anything if you've not been told to buy. That's just saying that information flow is very, very important. Then let's look at our last slides, which is the benefit of supply chain management. What do we gain from supply chain management? One is lower inventories. Why lower? When you talk of inventory, inventory means stock. Okay. So if you manage your supply chain, why lower inventory? Why not high inventory? So when we start doing inventory management, you come to understand why lower inventory is the all is 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 what is important when it comes to supply chain because in supply chain we look at optimization you don't you, we, we're looking at optimization in economics we call it uh, equilibrium okay so those of you who have done economics before you know that when you say equilibrium where demand meets supply okay so what we're saying in that in, in inventory the reason we talk about lower inventories is that Inventory is a cost to an organization. And if you read, tell you that inventory takes between 30 to 70% of organization's capital. Like when you go to the hospital, you know that when you use all your money to buy drugs and equipment and patients don't come, you realize that sometimes when you need money, they'll tell that they don't have liquid because they are all in inventory. So you don't overstock. You don't buy more than you need. So if you're using supply chain application, then you bring that optimization. You only order items you need, items that are appropriate. Then we have higher productivity. Why, why higher productivity? If you have enough stock, if you have enough inventory, then you are able to deliver Okay, as I gave an example that people come to you, if you don't have what it takes, if you don't have the needed equipment, you cannot deliver. So if you have an equipment, if you have uh, all the items you need, mm -hmm. then there will be higher productivity. Mm -hmm. Then shorter lead times. Another benefit of supply chain is shorter lead time. What is a, what is a lead time? A lead time is a period between ordering and receiving. So what lead time means is that if I order for, let's say, uh, paracetamol from a distributor, and the person says that, okay, for paracetamol, when you order, it takes, let's say, one week before you get delivery. It means that the lead time for paracetamol is one week. So when we talk of a lead time of a, of a product or commodity is a period between ordering and receiving. So it's saying that when you apply supply chain management, the benefit is that shorter lead times. Because you know, and then with the lead time, the lead time also helps you to set your maximum stock level, minimum stock level, and then rate other points. Then another benefit is that it brings higher profits. So once there is high productivity, there is high profit. And then customer loyalty, greater customer loyalty. Why greater customer loyalty? When customers, when you are able to deliver, if you have all the inventories, all the stock, all the equipment you need to work, deliver as a health professional, mm. then people will be happy with you. Is that not it? When patients yes. come, yes and you have equipment that you need to deliver, they feel happy rather than saying that, oh, we don't have this item, go to the next hospital. Oh, no. No. Next time they won't come there. 
The moment they are sick, that's why when you, you may be in a town, especially a town with our two, three facilities, you see people, especially when you have a, a, a mission hospital and government hospital, realize a lot of them, normally the mission hospital gets more clients. Is that not it? Because in most cases, they have the equipment. And so people prefer going to where they will be served. You don't know where, you don't want yeah. a place when uh, they come, you tell them that, oh, we don't have this, go to this place, go to that place. They won't come, they'll go to that place street. Don't come and waste their time over there. So what supply chain does is that it brings a greater customer loyalty. Okay, so we bring the cutting to our lecture for today. Any question, contribution? Please, which first point? The lower inventory. Okay, and when we talk of lower inventories, as I indicated earlier, in supply chain, we look at optimization. In supply chain, uh, overstocking, keeping too much stock is not uh, allowed. And then understocking is not also allowed. The reason why we are talking about lower inventories is that inventory uh, is money and it holds up, it can hold up to 70% of the total uh, working capital of the organization. So with Effective supply chain, where you have shorter lead times. You don't keep so many items because you know that your supply chain is effective. Anytime you need the item within the shortest possible time, the, the, the items will be available. So you don't overstock as others do. Sometimes you buy, you overstock particular items and then to the extent that you don't have money to buy the others. Okay, for instance, you need a, in, a, in a facility, you may need or every item. You need uh, sometimes, uh, uh, the, the, you, you need enough. But if you go and overstock particular item, for instance, use all, most of the revenue to buy particular stock, then you have challenge with others. That's why we're saying in that, there should be optimization in your, uh, what do you call it? Uh, there should be optimization in the world, inventory. I don't know whether, uh, uh, what do you call it? I okay now. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Thank you very much. Okay. So please, any more, any further questions? Okay, without any question, I'll bring a lecture to an end. Thank you for coming. Thank you for teaching to me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let me call outline. The course outline. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think I gave the topics of, for the, this slice. I've given you the the topics that we are going to treat. But as I mentioned, there are some topics that we need to add, and that will be treated alongside some of them, like when you talk of, uh, we need to treat warehousing. I get it. So we can, yes, we can teach them under storage and distribution, okay? Warehousing can fall within any of it because we can't talk about, we need to do storage of health commodities, how health commodities are, are stored, we do bean card, how to fill the bean card and all those things. <clears throat> but you can look at these, do be the major ones and the rest, uh, some of them will come under them. Okay, sir, so thank you very much. Yes, uh, I'll send the slides to you. So the class rep can uh, mind, uh, what do you call it? Um, Rosa number. The Hosam number is um, 
let me let me put it there. Let me put my two numbers there. You can come down. But then the MTN is not it's not what's up. The Vodafone is what's up. So class reps, you can send me hi, then I'll forward the uh slides to you to be given to your colleagues. So I've shared the numbers with you. Okay, I wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Men are bad and Sakite Ben is one best. Mina Bantan. Mina Bantan. Mina Bantan. Mina Bantan.